we are at Crater Lake, Oregon. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been in my life. A place like this always reminds me why I live in Southern Oregon, why I've chosen to for the last 19 years of my life. Great place to raise a family and a great place to play guitar. I've always really been moved by music, even as a little kid. The blade of the reaper suspend in the eye. I remember like the first song I really liked it was probably hearing some Deep Purple or something on the radio and really identifying with the, the heaviness of it. I remember having this thought in my head that I, I, I really liked what I was listening to, but I wished that it was just more dance. In the 1980 or beginning of 1981, in junior high, a friend of mine turned me on to punk rock and hardcore and stuff, and that was immediately like, wow, this is, this is what I was thinking about all along. Immediately, I was obsessed with it. Sex Pistols, Ramones, Germs, Black Flag, Fear, not too long after that, like Bad Brains and uh, Minor Threat, TSOL. The Tying of Saints was our local band in San Diego. You know, they were really incredible. A really pronounced metallic influence, and that was where I got, like, they were kind of like my portal to Motorhead, because they were actually playing Motorhead songs live. And then through that and tape trading, um, I got exposed to, like, uh, Sabbath, ACDC, other hard rock and metal stuff that I totally identified with too and kind of was rethinking my whole position on where I was initially with what I liked in music. There was a guitar in my house. My dad had a guitar, but he didn't play it. So to kind of piss him off, I thought I should learn how to play guitar. And there was always a lot of people around to jam with. The icing on the cake was that the, the guitar class at the high school, everybody knew it was the class that all you had to do was show up for roll call and you could just walk out the back door and nobody would know. So you just just ditch for an hour and a half or something. But it turned out that I didn't really do that. I, I did it a few times, but one of the older punks in the school was in that class and he started showing me stuff like uh, Ventures songs and Black Flag songs and Dick Dale note runs and stuff like that. And that was kind of how I started, you know, moving my fingers on the guitar and just, you know, kind of figuring it out. I was in a band before I could even play really, you know, I mean, and that was, completely fine because it wasn't about how great you could play or how many notes you could play or you know what guitar you had or what amp you had or any of that shit it was just about can you pour your emotions into this thing you know that's what punk rock and hardcore was to me it was it was just a pure emotional release All those things combined were kind of what brought me to guitar. Although it, originally, up, up until Violent Coercion, I was playing bass in the uh, first bands I was in. And, and it, it's kind of what I play now. I, I mean, it's a guitar, but I play it like a bass. If you open yourself up to it as a musician, you're influenced by any sound that's made in the world at any time. <laughs> Which isn't to discount uh, I just rise into Neubauten, but just to say that those guys made a lot of noise and they, they came out and they kind of deconstructed and reconstructed music within their own realm and they weren't concerned about what other people were expecting them to do or what other people wanted, you know, and that's totally what, what we're doing, you know. We're not concerned about whether people are into what we're doing or not. We're doing it because we feel that it's like something that we have to do. 
I met Noah first. He ended up joining the band last. I met his sister in San Diego, and then when I moved up to the Bay Area, we immediately clicked. Jason, um, we were living in this hotel, and we came home to the hotel one day, and Jason was actually uh, super battered and bloody, and then uh, laying in front of the front door of the hotel. He had just got the shit kicked out of him. And uh, we, we took him in for the night, gave him a place to stay. I met Dave just on the street. We were living in, in our car at the time. But it wasn't too long after that, maybe you know, two, three months, that Dave came up to me and they had this band Violent Coercion. They had been together previously for about a year and a half, I think. And he asked me if I wanted to come try out for their band. And uh, we ended up recording a demo. And then we just split up because like me and Dave and Jason just weren't into the direction of the band at all. And we were really wanting to do something different. After Violent Coercion broke up, we spent a few months just basically talking about it. Before we even really started playing, we were kind of visualizing it and um, really wanted to, to take it. You know, keeping in mind that at that time, like I was 18, Jason was 15, Dave was 16. And we started out just the three of us. Dave and Jason were both really, really exceptional at a young age. I was definitely playing catch up. I was always pretty good at writing riffs and, and putting songs together, but as far as actually playing, it was always a, it was always a problem. It took me about 10 years to get to the point where I could actually kind of play what I was thinking. I saw this movie, this, this movie, I think it was called Elvis. It was about Elvis, it was, it was a starred Kurt Russell. I was really like moved by it. I mean, I've always been a fan of Elvis and, and of early rock and roll in general, but, but just the whole, the energy of it, the simplicity of it. And, and then there's a couple times in there when he's, he's got an acoustic guitar and he's playing these songs and that was really inspiring to me as well. After my oldest child, my son Damon, was born, we were playing this show at uh, the Gilman Street Project in Berkeley. Damon's mom, something had happened. I don't know if somebody broke into our car or what it was, but she had come into the club with Damon and she was trying to get my attention. This guy like just jumped up on stage and ran over and stage dived like right onto my kid when he was like 11 months old. But I remember looking down in the audience and just seeing this guy grab the guy around the throat and just start fucking strangling him, you know. Flash forward six months or a year later when we're looking for a second guitarist and Dave's like, I know this guy, Steve. And we went out, went down to Steve's house to see what he was all about. And we walked in and there's this guy, the guy who had strangled the guy who had accidentally jumped on my kid. So, you know, it was kind of like one of those moments where you're like, yeah, this is our guy. Bringing Steve in just kind of solidified the whole thing, elevated it, and enabled us to really push forward and get The Word of Law written, which was our second album. By the time we got to the end of Word is Law and all the songs we'd written there, we were very much ready to add 
either a, a third guitar or keyboards. And we basically thought that keyboards is what we wanted to do because the way that we had it in our heads, we wanted something that would be limitless. Thank you.